Greetings everyone, this is Brandon here with the Fralix Arms channel and today I wanted to make a video and talk about probably the reigning champion of the compact 9mm handgun category, the Glock 19. Glock 19 in the blue flame. Now the Glock 19 is probably the most popular handgun I'd say at least in the United States, but it's probably in the world. As far as the compact category goes, a compact 9mm, it's definitely one of the most, if not the most common uh, 9mm handgun that you can find them anywhere. Almost every household has one in them that, that, that is a uh, household that allows guns to be inside of it. So um, it is definitely... Uh, it's a fan favorite, that's for sure. And whenever I was uh, choosing my handgun that I wanted to uh, carry, um, it was between pretty much the Glock 19 and the uh, smaller brother of the Glock 19, the, the 43. And the 43 had just come out. Now this was uh, about three years ago. Um, so I, I shot them both and I, I made my decision to carry the, uh, the Glock 19, or, or well, purchase it at the time. A little history on Glock. Glock uh, was founded in sometime in the early 60s, maybe 62, 63, uh, by Gaston Glock. Um, but the very first uh, Glock that was, uh, the handgun that was manufactured was the Glock 17 in 1982. So about 20 years after the actual company was founded, by Mr. Gaston in uh, Austria. I thought Vienna, and when I said, when I thought Vienna in my head, I thought Vienna like Italy, but I, I knew that was wrong. So, but uh, there is a Vienna, Austria, the city where he had founded the plastics company. Uh, and a, a lot of, uh, what a lot of people, a little tidbit of information that a lot of people don't know is that the actual number of a Glock, say the Glock 17 or the Glock 23, the actual uh, numerical um, stamp that each Glock gets um, has nothing to do with the caliber it, that it shoots or anything like that. It's the patent number from uh, Glock. So that that's the number. Uh, the Glock 17 carrying 17 rounds in its magazine has nothing to do with, with its name. Um, that is just the 17th invention uh, of Gaston Glock. So he just rolled with that and it, you know, it, it stuck fine. Um, so Ever since they came out, they have been extremely reliable guns, uh, as far as my knowledge is concerned. Maybe when they first came out, uh, people were skeptical. Ah, you know, a polymer lower. I, I don't know about that. I'm just going to keep my trusty 1911. You know, it's the 80s. So, with that being said, I just wanted to give uh, a little tidbit of history there for you, uh, if you didn't know anything about Glocks, because uh, that, that's kind of what this video is. It's uh, there are probably millions of videos uh, out there, or at least videos that have been viewed millions of times uh, about uh, Glocks, and especially the Glock 19 being a very specific searchable item. Um, but uh, I'm assuming that you uh, have found this video uh, doing research on uh, the purchase of a Glock. So um, I'm going to try not to be biased. Um, but I do very much enjoy my Glock. So enough talk. Uh, let's get into it. On the table in front of me here, I've got my I've got my Glock 19, um, and it's empty. There's a uh, there's nothing in there, nothing in the, the magazine well. I'll come a little closer so maybe you can see. Um, I've done a, I've done a few things to it. Uh, this is my own personal gun, obviously. Uh, don't have any uh, <laughs> and no sponsorships or anything crazy like that. But uh, I've done a few things to make it mine. Um, I did the, uh, the the white color fill on the lettering. Not something that a lot of people like. Um, I just thought it'd be a cool little experiment, and uh, just wanted to see how long it would last. And it's it's you know through cleaning and shooting, it's uh, held up fine. Um, nothing special. Just uh, just white fingernail polish for the most part. Borrowed it from my wife. Thank you, honey. Um, so, uh, another thing that I highly recommend is uh, uh, the, one of the first things you should probably do is get that, uh, that extended slide release. I'll see if I can get the, uh, the camera to do a close-up on that, possibly. 
yeah, I mean, you can probably see that. But it's it's an extended, it's an, they should really put these on there from the factory, in my opinion. Um, that little nub uh, really just gives you that much, just a little bit extra real estate to where you can just really, you can really bear down on that thing. It's super nice. Um, stock ones are fine. I had the stock one on mine for nearly three years. Uh, this is a very, very recent upgrade that I've done. Uh, I've, I've barely touched it, you know, and why not? Uh, Glock's slogan is perfection, right? So, um, that, uh, that is, mm, th there are some things left to be desired for some people on Glocks. Uh, a lot of people don't like how, uh, there's a hump, this hump in the back. Um, a gun that I that is uh, I think is extremely comparable to this gun. It's 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 a dream gun of mine, so to speak. Um, it's the uh, the H and K P30 or the P30L, um, and uh, my dad happens to have one. That's why I really I really like it, and I'm able to have a, a uh, an honest opinion about it. Um, the actual grip on that gun comes down a lot straighter. Uh, this one comes at an angle, um, and a lot of people don't like the finger grooves. Uh, the Gen 3 Glocks started using those, um, possibly Gen 2, but I'm I am not uh, a Glock expert by any means. Um, but I do know this gun fairly well. I have taken I have oh, taken <laughs> I have taken this gun apart, completely stripped it um, uh, in the past, um, and I, I have used this gun. Uh, it's not a it doesn't sit in its case. Um, I usually have it. Uh, with me by my by my bedside or what have you um, it's the gun that I carry every time that I, I get the opportunity to carry it um, so it's got a lot of wear and tear to it and I say a lot uh, it could look worse it could look much worse um, you can uh, you can see little spots where it's gone in and out of the holster a couple times you can see on top of the barrel here where uh, where the slide has come back several times um, and I, I was, I, I've been holding off on doing this video for quite some time now because I wanted to actually go out and shoot it, and uh, so that way I could give you guys an extremely fresh, honest opinion. Um, and it's not because you know I've had the gun for three years now, um, and you know you would think that I'd be able to just tell you how I feel about it at any moment, but um, I really wanted to just go out and actually shoot it a lot. Um, because there, there are guys on YouTube uh, that have shot their gun, whether it be a Glock or a H and K or a Smith or, or whatever, um, uh, that have put thousands upon thousands of rounds through their Glocks. Um, and I think pr I probably haven't put up until probably today maybe 2,000 rounds through it at the most. Like I, I really have not shot it as much as I wish I could. Um, but uh, again, a lot of these guys that can go out and do that sort of stuff are uh, police, military, um, um, they are uh, sponsored or they just make a lot more money than I do, uh, you know, uh, they uh, get a lot of ammo. Uh, ammunition is, you know, this, 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 this is nothing without any ammunition. I mean, I guess I could throw it at somebody, uh, but uh, that's about it use it to, to beat somebody with I guess um, uh, I mean some people do refer to these as blocks because they're real blocky I guess you could bludgeon someone in the head with it <laughs> if you if you uh, desire to do that um, or I mean if you had a need uh, I actually I honestly think that it would withstand that pretty well because uh, these things can take a pretty big beating a pretty good beating and uh, they do pretty well um, that's that's one of the things that really drove me towards wanting to buy one in the first place is they're just relentless reliability uh, I honestly can't think of a better word there uh, just you, when you think of Glock you, you think of reliability and when you think of a gun that you're gonna carry to possibly protect yourself um, you want reliability it's kinda like going and buying a car uh, it's it's, it's kinda like a Honda you can't really go wrong with buying a Honda if you're just getting something to get you from A to B something that's gonna just do the job um, and that's what this that's what these guns are for they're gonna do the job that's why uh, pardon me um, that's why you get police officers and uh, military for the long time longest time had uh, Glocks as their as their standard issue um, but uh, you see a lot of police officers that carry these and uh, it, it there's a reason I mean 
there are plenty of Glock haters out there, and I don't have to sit here and preach to you about that. I mean, I'm sure you already know that. And if you don't, now you do. <laughs> I mean, people have differing opinions, and that's just the world we live in. Um, but uh, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> um, you, you know, you uh, uh, there's a there's a joke that runs in my family that. Uh, uh, you, you ask, uh, oh, do you want to shoot, uh, you guys want to go shoot the Glocks? And it's like, uh, is there anything, do they make anything else? I thought that's all they made. They being a, an arbitrary thing, like, of uh, the world, the world makes something other than a Glock. And, you know, of course, it's it's just funny. What else can I say about it? Um, it's, for, for a guy my size, it's extremely easy to conceal, uh, which is great. Um, it doesn't have the big long um, handle of the Glock 17, which I don't have one here to compare. Um, and I'm wearing a black shirt so that way you guys can see this black gun extremely well. I just noticed that through the viewfinder. Um, <laughs> I'll hold it in front of my face so you can see it. Um, let's see, what else can I say? Uh, finger grooves for me, they work. When I, whenever I, whenever I come in for that master grip, it just, it just works for me. It really, I mean, it feels good in the hand, and it feels good in most people's hands. And I've got, I've got fairly large hands myself, um, and uh, maybe for a smaller guy, uh, and, I, and I mean that in the nicest of ways, um, uh, you might want to go for maybe the 43. Uh, I, I did consider it because it is, it is much, it's a much smaller footprint. Especially when you're trying to conceal it on your person somewhere, uh, you know, um, the 43 would be much easier to conceal than this thing. That's for sure. And there have been situations where I've, I've I've stooped over and had to pick up something, and you know, my shirt just comes up just high enough to where, you know, it's showing this thing off to the world. Uh, it happens. It it does happen. But you need to make sure that you're cognitive of those types of situations, and you need to be able to respond or be able to hide it appropriately um, for the situation so if you're at the range it doesn't really matter but if you're at Walmart or wherever what have you um, and uh, at the same time you know um, a lot of places especially these days it being 2019 now um, don't allow um, firearms um, I'm not going to talk about that in this video we'll, we'll, we'll come we'll come back to that uh, we're not going to talk about a lot of things in this video. If you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to post them down in the comment section below. Um, this is this is a this is something I, I you know want to start doing more often, I'm kind of doing an overview, if you will, not really a review, uh, maybe maybe a hint of a review, but not really, um, but just my opinion and my take on things. So, um, something that I'm planning on doing in the future. Um, uh, I want to put on some different sites. It just seems like something people do. Um, now, going down that trail just, just a little, um, it being something people do, I don't necessarily like uh, jumping on uh, the bandwagon, um, so to speak, and buying this gun is extremely um, jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, I like to be original. I like to do things that other people have not done before. I like to try new things and go out on limbs and take new paths. Take the paths that are less less taken, you know. So, but um, when it comes to reliability and duty ability and trusting in something, I guess in a way it's just three different ways of saying reliability. Um, you, you just can't beat this. Uh, you can't. No, no one in their right mind is going to look at a Glock and think to themselves, "Hmm, I don't know if I would trust that in a life or death situation." That's just not something that's going to happen. Um, and if that, I mean, if if you're that type of person, or if you have run into that type of person, I mean, someone may not want to trust. A plastic gun, a 50% plastic gun, in a life or death situation, totally understandable. This is the internet. We're allowed to have opinions, right? Uh, so, I mean, some people may think otherwise, but we're allowed to have opinions. Um, but for the most part, 
uh, for the majority, this is going to be a top pick. Um, so if you're thinking about getting one, get one. Uh, technically, this was the first gun I ever purchased. Um, I walked into the uh, the gun store of uh, of question, and uh, again, that this will be a, a I'll have another video, a longer story on it. But I walked in, and I, I had I had an idea of what I wanted. I had just turned 21, and uh, I bought this, and I bought another gun, and I'll talk about that gun in a separate video. But um, I went and got this specific gun, and it was technically the first uh, gun I'd ever purchased in my life. And I was, I, I have not regretted it. I mean, it was an extremely wise choice for someone that, for someone in my shoes, let me say that, because I was not very well educated in firearms at that point in my life. And this was, like I said, three years ago. Um, and in three years, I have learned more than what I ever thought I would learn. Um, I've got way more gun stuff now, way more stuff involving with guns, and even this channel that I was inspired to make, um, just just based on mainly guns and a few other things, but guns being the main point, uh, arms, right? Fralix arms. So, with that being said, um, I don't know what else I could say about it. Uh, I'm not planning on ever getting rid of it, I'll tell you that. Um, I did a trigger guard undercut, and that's that's neither here nor there. That is not a necessity. Um, but like I said, I do have bigger hands. I'm uh, I'm I'm a shade above six foot, maybe I might be around six foot two, six foot three on a good day, depending on the shoes I'm wearing, <laughs> um, and socks too. So uh, and I, so I'm a, I'm a fairly large person, and uh, my hands are quite big so that uh, that middle finger my bird finger when I come in and, and come in with my master grip um, I it just I would hit the knuckle whenever I would practice my draw because um, I do uh, since I can't afford a lot of ammunition uh, I do a lot of at home um, practice draws and a lot of dry firing um, so um, and you know uh, dry firing uh, a striker fire pistol such as this is extremely fine that there's you're not going to hurt it um, it's not like a, a, a some revolvers now some revolvers you can dry fire um, but I'm I do not have the knowledge to be able to tell you um, which ones you can and which ones you can't I just know on this particular gun you can dry fire it no problem um, so I'll sit here um, at my table or in the kitchen or while I'm watching TV and I'll just I'll just practice my my take up and my trigger pull. I'll practice it, and I, I don't I don't you don't even necessarily have to be aiming at anything. You can just learn it, make it make it just muscle memory at that point. Um, it's uh, it's important. It's definitely important to, to know to know your weapon inside and out. Um, so that's something that, that I that I'll that I'll do, um, and I you know I'll practice aiming down sights. But I mean if, there, if there's nothing coming out of the barrel, um, unless I'm working on like target acquisition, um, where I'm drawing and then acquiring a target, um, there's really no point. It, it depends on what drills you're you're working on at home, um, and there's a lot you can run. And I might make a separate video on the different drills that you can run at home without having bullets in the chamber because obviously you don't want a bunch of you don't want your house to look like Swiss cheese I'm assuming so um, so yeah but that 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 extended slide release ooh that is so nice it's, it is extremely nice I'm not trying to make a lot of noise either my, my wife is trying to sleep so she'll, uh, she'll see this video and she'll be extremely happy I'm sure Another drill you can try, and I'm not trying to make this that video, but you can practice your mag changes. I mean, I'm okay. It's kind of something new that I've been working on, but I also don't carry an extra mag on my left-hand side either. That's not something I do. I mean, I guess it's just something good to learn how to do. I mean, if you're if you're in the dark, I mean, you know, trying to defend your home, because that's I mean that's another thing that this this is really useful for. You got. If you carry one in the chamber, you got 15 rounds, kids. 
15. It's double stack mag. I mean, that's 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 a lot of firepower. So you think 16 rounds in this gun, and you can hide it. I mean, that's call me crazy, but that's uh, that's pretty nice. That's a whole lot of firepower. <laughs> so, um, what else can I say? Um, when I went and purchased it, I know I went off on a tangent. You're, you'll find that I do that quite often. Um, I'll forget. I'll get off track, and I'll forget what I'm saying. But when I went and purchased it, um, oh yeah, I was talking about being on a bandwagon. I, I don't like being that kind of person. But when I went and purchased it, um, I had no desire for any other pistol, and that was. I'll blame that on ignorance. Um, but. Also, this is this is middle of the road, if, so to speak. Um, I'm not. I can't spit off like accurate current on this date, which is January the fifth, 2019. I can't. I can't spit off like prices on things. Um, I can tell you that when I bought this gun, uh, it's a Gen 4 Glock 19. When I purchased this gun, it was about $550. Um, if you go and uh, uh, my my one of my uh, my brother, uh, he just got a Glock 19 Gen 4 this year. Well, I say this year, close to Christmas, he got one, and uh, they paid less than $500 for it. My father just got a Glock 19 Gen 4. So all three of us, my brother, my dad, and me, we all have this same gun. It's not a coincidence. It's not. It's very intentional. For good reason, um, he they both paid less than five hundred dollars for it. I think closer to maybe four fifty now since the Gen fives are out. But you got to think, mine's three years old. So when mine was new, it was new. The Gen fours were not out for you know an extremely long time. Um, so yeah, um, so not being not jumping on the bandwagon, but also not making a stupid decision and just you know, kind of not really going really against the grain there and purchasing something maybe of similar value that I was also unfamiliar with. I mean, I was fairly familiar with Glocks. Um, when I was younger, my father had a Glock 17. It was probably a Gen 3, maybe, maybe a Gen 2. It's It's been a while, but um, probably a Gen 3. If I remember correctly, it had finger grooves. So, and I shot that. And, uh, I mean, you know, I, I liked it. But I was young, though. I didn't even know what I was holding. To me, when I was, you know, younger, a pistol was a pistol. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of us can say that. Um, so, um, I purchased it with the intention of using it as a, as a learning platform. And I have learned so much, uh, honestly. Like, I can almost, I can look at a pistol uh, just for a few seconds and figure out how to break it down because a Glock breakdown is probably the easiest in the world or at least to me at this point maybe not easy to someone that's never done it but as far as keeping it clean and learning how to use it I mean it almost it there's almost no comparison and then you're back in the fight that quick it's that quick and I mean I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing necessarily so um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a great, it's a teacher. It's a, oh, that's a great word. It's, it's a great teacher. Um, and it's extremely forgiving. It'll make you look like you know what you're doing too. Like it, it'll make you look like you're a good shot. <laughs> Cause I, I'm a, if you ask my dad, I'm, I'm a, I'm a great shot. Um, but, uh, I, I know that I've got a lot of room for improvement. Um, so uh, not jumping on the bandwagon, just making a smart purchase. If you compare this gun to another gun that's also in the $500 range, um, I honestly couldn't tell you. you. There's probably a couple Rugers out there, maybe maybe a, a maybe a compact or even a full size nine, uh, or maybe a 40 caliber if you're if you're in that crowd. Um, Probably an FN. I mean, you might be able to find an FN pistol for around $500. Smith & Wesson. A Smith & Wesson M&P um, Shield 9 or, 
or any of their other models I'm sure you can find those but then again you can probably find a model that's a little cheaper um, you can even find cheaper Glocks now I think you can get a Gen 3 uh, Glock 19 for probably around a little under $400 used because you're not going to find a new one so you can probably you know local pawn shops or whatever so for a new gun around this price range I don't know if you're going to find just something that is this user friendly uh, and just very well oriented in all categories I mean it's just and I know it just sounds like I'm just loving on this thing but I'm, I'm trying to make new gun owners understand that you're not going to make a bad choice that, that's what it boils down to purchasing any Glock uh, is not going to uh, it's not going to come back and bite you in the end um, they're they are extremely well um, tested and they have been tried and they are true and they are accurate I mean bloody accurate unbelievably accurate up to you know maybe even a hundred yards in the right hands um, I know I hit a hundred at a hundred yards I hit an a like either an eight or ten inch um, steel plate uh, it wasn't my first shot of the day let me tell you that I didn't just oh would you look at that ding like it there was there was none of that but I, I could hit it after um, a few shots and me really concentrating it is possible now will you ever have to self defense your way a hundred yard like have any self defense from a hundred yards away probably not but it's not impossible so um let's see what else what all have I said color fill trigger guard undercut extended slide release and that's in three years of owning the gun now uh, I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I could have done a lot more to this gun over the past three years. But I, let's just say that I have invested my funds elsewhere. Um, and we'll get into that in a different video, like I said. So, um, I think, uh, I, I, I don't know what else I'm going to say about it, just sitting here talking to you, showing it to you. Um, so, I think, um, oh, and I've got the... Uh, factory uh, beaver tail here um, I like that I just I liked the I like it um, it thickened it up for me and I liked that a lot um, and the beaver tail is actually it's also going to protect you from the slide coming back um, which it can come back and bite you you got to make sure that you got a good master grip on this thing so um, so um, bullet points here um, Overall, it's it's going to be a good purchase, no matter who you are, or what type of uh, training you've had or lack of training. Um, and speaking of training, um, I have uh, I've always been a, I've always said that uh, don't be the guy that goes and buys a gun, puts it in their pocket, and calls it a day. So it's a lot a lot you have to think about. Um, so. I've said too much. I've obviously said too much. Um, this video has gone on quite a while, but uh, I just wanted to touch on all the all the highlights and all the points that I that I wanted to make. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to show you guys um, some video clips of me shooting today because I wanted to go out and shoot quite a bit so that way I could give you guys a really honest opinion um, about its accuracy in in the hands of someone that is slightly experienced but still has a lot of learning to do uh, myself so uh, let's take a look at that footage real fast alright everyone in this section of the video I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, the shooting that I was doing earlier today um, you see me moving the target out uh, about 25 ish feet I'll be aiming for the number two spot that's the orange section in the upper right hand corner um, and uh, I, you guys can see right there that I'm using the uh, the 33 round magazine, and I and I know that's comical. Uh, I know it's kind of funny um, to look at, but the reason that I was using that was because it's just a lot easier to load that sucker up and just pop off, um, have 33, um, actually technically 34 shots with one in the chamber. So it's a lot easier 
to just load that up and just you know shoot consistently um, and not have to take a break to either swap mags or, or what have you it's just it's a lot more ammunition um, just to work on accuracy and trigger pull and your breathing and all that so um, I'm aiming for that uh, number two spot in the orange um, and it's about uh, I'd say maybe 25 to 30 feet away um, and I'm just uh, practicing um, my breathing and my consistency um, you'll see I do I do my press checks there and um, I'll t I'm, I'm taking my time here and uh, you know people argue you know well in a high stress situation uh, in a life or death situation you're not going to have your you know you're not going to have your perfect footing or your perfect trigger pull or your perfect breathing um, but uh, you know this this kind of stuff is very important to you just to, to familiarize yourself with your with your firearm so you see I'm bringing the target in and you see that number two there um, I uh, just pointed at it <laughs> you see the number two there that is a uh, that's not bad um, in my opinion for for uh, you know that that grouping right there is about the size of my open hand um, so it's that's really not bad at that distance uh, in my opinion so um, I, I was very very happy with that and that is something that I believe anyone can pull off with just basic knowledge of the firearm so um, and that's that's fairly consistent too. Um, a lot of people pull left, and you can see on that number one spot right there where um, uh, I believe it was me and my dad probably just um, going back and forth shooting at that one where we were both pulling um, a little left, and that number three spot was a uh, a little bit closer to me. So that number two spot I'm, I was very pleased with. So you see here where I've. Uh, uh, emptied both of <laughs> or I emptied both of my 33 round uh, mags and I'm uh, pulling out my dad's H&K P30 here um, love that gun that is a fantastic 9 millimeter pistol um, uh, it along with the Glock um, they're they're fairly comparable uh, especially in our accuracy um, I really do enjoy shooting um, the H&K though I mean it's just it's a very high quality firearm so I'm gonna um, the the reason that I'm shooting it is because one is it's frankly it's just enjoyable to shoot but two I wanted a um, a decent comparison for the video um, so that way I could tell you guys exactly how um, maybe not exactly how um, they they go um, if you're comparing them uh, back to back um, but I just wanted to really be able to describe um, how well that the that you can, you can go from one gun to another um, so I can go from the Glock to this gun back to the Glock and um, be able to continuously shoot fairly accurately um, um, you know if we're talking about life or death uh, situations you may not always be able to use the gun that you um, are wanting to use I mean you may have to just use whatever you have um, available at the time so you know not trying to trail too far off into a, a tangent uh, that that's like I said earlier that will be great for another video but um, I uh, I just wanted to give the H&K a go so let's see eventually I will put the camera back up I got a full 16 rounds there I got one in the chamber and so let's see there's dad behind me talking to me coaching me up and always make sure you keep your uh, you mind your muzzle that's something I definitely need to work on a lot um, I feel I feel overconfident sometimes that I know that the gun is empty but um, as always rule number one of a, a firearm um, always treat it as if it's loaded doesn't matter if it's an open chamber or the slides locked back or whatever always treat it as if it is loaded always so here we'll get to see the grouping uh, I believe that I shot I'm talking to my dad about the trigger reset um, I had a, a premature discharge with the uh, H&K whenever I was uh, shooting it because I messed up on the trigger reset I was so in tune with the Glock trigger reset that I 
went too short on the H and K and actually pulled the trigger and nothing happened. Um, and so that really messed me up with the H and K. You can see here that I'm a little frustrated, um, contemplating what I need to do differently with the H and K. I wasn't happy with how I was shooting it. Um, it, uh, it, it makes you a good shooter. The gun will actually, uh, like I said earlier with the Glock, the H&K will also make you look like you know what you're doing. It, it's a very friendly firearm, but um, I was not happy with my previous groupings with the Glock and how well that I shot it, um, and then the grouping that I shot with the H&K. Um, if I ever will show the grouping, uh, I, I'll explain it, but uh, I, was, uh, I was hitting very low. Um, so I was having to compensate for it. Um, so I adjusted my footing, I adjusted my grip um, several times to try and get it uh, to where I wanted it. Um, but uh, I, I eventually did get it. Okay, so I know I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit here, and I know it's a little bit hard to see, but just below the three on the uh, in the center of the target, between the four and the five, that was my first set of groupings with the H and K. Um, and uh, here, like you, could, if you look directly under the number one, that was my fi my third and final grouping with the H and K, and I was much much happier with that. My vertical, um, I, I, I kind of carried it a lot bet between the vertical, but my horizontal, my back and forth, um, my windage, if you will, was perfect. Uh, I, I was I was very okay with the amount of back and forth now the up and down i had a lot of work uh to put to put into it but that's also not my everyday carry gun so um with that being said you guys uh i think i'm just going to leave the video here uh, i'm going to give you a, a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a uh a fun thing right here at the very end of the video if you guys have stayed with me this long to see it but uh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, video on the Frelix Arms channel I really do appreciate uh, the community that we have growing so far it's small but it's good and uh, I'm very proud of that I'd, I'd rather have quality over quantity any day of the week so so I hope I have uh, bestowed some confidence in you thank you guys so much for watching uh, and I will catch you guys in the next episode. Take care. 34 rounds. I'm about to just mag dump it. So enjoy. I got one in there already. 33. Here we go. Count them off for me. Yeah, okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, that was fun. You didn't hit him, you scared him to death. I hit nothing, but I scared the living crap out of everything downrange. <laughs>